Today with Joseph Prince. When the Holy Spirit is in the church, there is light. You listen to something, man, yeah, what have I been doing? I'm so glad I came to church today. Like every Sunday, you listen, you have light. When light comes in, that much darkness is lesser in your life. Whenever God is glorified, somebody is healed. When God is glorified, a blind man sees. When God is glorified, the dead is raised. Always. When you glorify the Lord, good happens to you and your family. So live life with a purpose. Once you are in Christ, listen, you can do a dark thing, but you're still in the light. Okay, that's what Jesus said. And that's what 1 John 1, 7 is all about. It's been misquoted a lot as if we walk according, no, it's if we walk in the light, it's where you are, not your behavior. Dear friends, a blessed new year to you and all your loved ones. Wendy and I are glad you can join us today. As we step into 2019, I want to declare to you that because God has gone ahead into your future, your 2019 shall be blessed. The way to see good this year is to prioritize His Word. No matter what happens, keep hearing God's Word of grace. When you hear of turmoil on the news or see it all around you, remember His promises to you. The Word of God declares you have a loving Father. He wants you to rest in His love and allow His supply to flow into every area of your life this new year. That's right. And because I want you to really experience this, I have prepared a special teaching resource this month just for you. It is going to help you find rest in Christ as you handle the daily challenges of life. We have made this available for a gift of any amount so that you can easily get a hold of it for yourself or your loved ones. I believe that as you listen to this series, you will step into His powerful peace and receive His abundant provision for all your needs. Wendy and I are praying for you to experience the Lord's shalom peace like never before and for 2019 to be your best year yet. Kickstart your year with Joseph's brand new four CD audio series, Be Still, finding rest in the midst of chaos as a thank you for your gift of any amount to the ministry. In this liberating series, learn how you can rest even when challenges come your way. You can receive the good you don't deserve because Christ took all the bad that you and I deserve at the cross and put to our account all His goodness all His righteousness. If you want to receive what He's done, rest and believe. And for a gift of $75 or more to the ministry, you will also get Joseph's latest book, Anchored, Finding Peace in the Storms of Life. My latest book, Anchored, talks about real issues that all of us go through, insecurity, comparison, and anxiety. When you order Anchored today, I would also like to bless you with a copy of No More Mind Games. I wrote this to help people who are struggling with discouragement, depression, and suicidal thoughts. I pray that you'll get a hold of these books and be a blessing to someone whom you know needs to be encouraged and strengthened by the Lord. Experience a new level of peace today. Get your copy now at josephprince.org or call us toll free at 1-877-769-5433. Don't miss this limited time offer. Hallelujah. Are you ready for the Word? Yes. Look at uh, 2 Corinthians 4. It says, If our gospel is veiled, it is veiled to those who are perishing, whose minds the God of this age, that's the devil, has blinded, who do not believe, lest the light of the gospel of the glory of Christ, who is the image of God, should shine on them. Next verse. But we do not preach ourselves, but Christ Jesus the Lord. Every true minister do not preach themselves, they preach Christ Jesus the Lord, and ourselves, your born servants, for Jesus' sake. For it is the God who commanded light to shine out of darkness. God says, light be and light was, who has shone in our hearts to give the light of the knowledge of the glory of God in the face of Jesus Christ. You know, one time God spoke to me and God said to me, son, study the very first mention of my word in the Bible. When I spoke, what did I say? I know what God, the very first word, I know it by heart. Light be, let there be light. And there was light. God says, look at it in the Hebrew. So I look at it in the Hebrew, and I've shared this with my friend in Israel, and he says, my goodness, Joseph, where do you get that from? From the Holy Spirit. And this is what God said literally when God says, let there be light. All right? Vayomer, reading from right to left, Vayomer Elohim, Yehi Or, Vayi Or. That's how they say it in Hebrew. Notice, Yehi Or, let there be, starts with Yud. Hey, can you see that? That's the name of God. 
Yeah. When you say hallelujah, you're saying hallelujah is praise either. Yeah. Yahweh. His name Yahweh. This is a short abbreviated form. Yah is God's name. In other words, literally, the very first word that God spoke is, God says, let him be the light in your life. Because there was darkness before this verse. Show them the darkness, all right? Uh, Genesis 1, God created the heavens and the earth. The earth was without form and void. Now, why would God create the earth without form and void? Doesn't make sense. No, God created the earth perfect. God created the earth beautiful. But there was a rebellion in heaven. One third of the angels under Lucifer's leadership rebelled against God and they, they, they spoiled the earth. All right, that's not a message altogether. So the earth was without form and God's first solution is let Jesus be the light. Now you might think the light here is the sun, but the sun wasn't created yet. This was the first day. The sun and the moon was, and the stars were created on the fourth day. So this is not the light of the sun. This is Jesus being the light. So whatever, if the doctors have given you a bad prognosis, if the, the, the uh, habit that you have seems to get worse and worse, it's darkness all around. What do you do? Bring Jesus into the situation. He is the light of the world. Let him be the light in your life. Can I have a good amen? Now watch this. The Bible says back to um, 2 Corinthians 4, God who shone Command that light to shine out of darkness has shone in our hearts to give the light of the knowledge of the glory of God in the face of Jesus Christ. So, we got to preach Jesus for people to have the light shine in their hearts. Amen? Now, under the sound of my voice right now, there are three groups of people. All right? Now, all of you are born again. I'm just speaking generally. This might not be you. Okay? But if there are, anyone watching me on television, there are three groups of people. Either they are going for more light, all right, they are interested in the spiritual light, you know. The Jewish people, they want light. All right, the Jewish people, they want light. They want light. The Greeks, on the other hand, the Greeks, during the time of, of this writing, there were the three main groups, the Jewish people, the Greeks and the Romans. The Greeks, wants, they want wisdom, they want knowledge. Knowledge is power. All right, and the Romans, what do they want? They want glory. The Romans want glory. Glory is, come on, I conquered this nation. I'll fight for glory. Stupid, never mind. Glory important. <laughs> the Greek says, no, we don't want glory. We want knowledge. More knowledge, more power. Knowledge is power. I tell you this, everyone believes in either one of this or more. If you are a leader of corporation, whatever, please study a lot on leadership. I'm not against knowledge pertaining to your field. I'm just saying this idea, knowledge answers everything. It doesn't. Yeah. Light outside of Christ doesn't answer everything. Yeah. All right? Glory! Where are they today? Where are the Romans today? They conquered the then known world. Where are they today? We gotta find our fulfillment people yes. in something more eternal. Because don't disrespect your spirit. Your spirit was not created for temporal things. Your spirit was created by God because it has a nature of God. Spirit is eternal. So it must be fulfilled with spirit things. True spirit things. Not Satan's spirit things. Amen. Are you listening? But we find all three in the face of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. We have the light of the knowledge of the glory of God in the face of Jesus Christ. You know, children of Israel, when they were in the wilderness, right, they have a tabernacle, we call it a tabernacle. Now, look at this tabernacle, picture of the tabernacle, right? Now, the people that work, there are a lot of people outside, it's very busy, right? The light outside is very busy, uh, the life outside. And what kind of light is outside? What kind of light is outside? What kind of light? It is not a magic question or a trick question, okay? <laughs> Simple. What is sunny? <laughs> why, why is it sunny? Sun. <laughs> there was the what light was it? Sunlight. Very good. All right. Okay, that's what I was, after. I was after. Sunlight outside, light of the world. This is what the world is all about. The light they have cannot come from God because all the light they learn from books and, and educational books or whatever books. All right, it's all from sunlight. Natural light. Natural light. Can I advise you? Go beyond the sun to the one who made the sun. Okay. So when you step into the so-called tabernacle or temple back then, the tabernacle, it's not a temple yet, 
they step in, now only the priest can come in here. In other words, today only believers can be in this place. What do you have on the left? The lampstand. Can you see the light there? And on the right, the table of showbread and the altar of incense. Okay? Now, what light is this? It's all covered all over. What light? What provides the light here? The lampstand. Very good. The menorah. And what is the menorah? The Holy Spirit in the church. The Holy Spirit in the church. Because the lampstand is also the Holy Spirit. But Jesus stood in Revelation in the midst of seven lampstands, which are the seven churches. In other words, when the Holy Spirit is in the church, there is light. You listen to something here. Man, yeah, what have I been doing? I'm so glad I came to church today. Like every Sunday, you listen, you have light. When light comes in, that much darkness is lesser in your life. You know how much darkness there is in your life? You want to know? To the degree you are still fearful, to the degree you are still easily um, um, discouraged and depressed, to that degree, there's still darkness. You are believing something wrong. So don't worry, don't condemn yourself, keep on coming. Amen? Now, when was, then, by the way, this is the light of the church, and the dimensions give you 2,000 cubits, which is 2,000 years from the time of Christ. But when you go into the curtain, into the Holy of Holies, that's where God dwells. And in the Holy of Holies, guess what? There is this Ark of the Covenant. Down here, there's no lampstand. Down here, there's no sun. So you know what, why is it so bright? is the light of the Shekinah glory. It's a year of greater glory. God is literally telling us, step into this dimension. Step into this place where my presence and the mercy seat gives you glory. The light of the glory. You will see everything based on glory. Do I have to do this, Pastor Prince? You won't have to ask me that. You will say, does this glorify Jesus? Does that glorify the Lord? That will be your, your, your good life. You will live life in such a way that it glorifies God and you'll be safe. Whenever you glorify God, it's always, look at the Bibles in the Scriptures, whenever God is glorified, somebody is healed. When God is glorified, a blind man sees. When God is glorified, the dead is raised. Always, when you glorify the Lord, good happens to you and your family. So live life with a purpose. Don't just glorify yourself. It's empty. Can I have a good amen? Do you know when Jesus said, I'll close with this, when, do you know when Jesus says for the first time in the Gospels, I am the light of the world? Do you know when? He first said, I am the light of the world. Do you know when? Would you like to see? John 8, we'll close with this. Then Jesus spoke to them again saying, I am the light of the world. He who follows me shall not walk in darkness, but shall have the light of life. Just call your attention to the word follows me. Shall not. The word shall not. Shall not is an impossibility. It's a double negative in the Greek. Impossible. Once you are in Christ, Listen, you can do a dark thing, but you're still in the light. Okay, that's what Jesus said. And that's what 1 John 1, 7 is all about. It's been misquoted a lot as if we walk according, no, it's if we walk in the light, it's where you are, not your behavior. So if you are a Christian, you're a believer in Christ, amen, you are following Christ in the light. You can never be in darkness. Are you listening? But watch this, it starts with what? Then Jesus spoke to them. Then, you don't start a statement of then. That means what? Something happened before this. You know the story? The story of the woman caught in adultery. So let's go to the story and we'll close with this, okay? Because you can see about the light and the glory. Jesus went to the Mount of Olives. Next verse now. Early in the morning, again, nothing is without significance. Early in the morning is when the sun rises. So you have the light coming in. It's a beautiful story. He came again into the temple and all the people came to him and he sat down and taught them. Then the scribes and Pharisees brought to him a woman caught in adultery. And when they had set her in the midst, they said to him, Teacher, this woman was caught in adultery in the very act. You're about to see the light. You're about to see the knowledge. You're about to see the glory in the face of Jesus Christ. Caught in adultery in the very act. Now Moses in the law commanded us. Such should be stoned. What says you? What say you? That's what they're saying. Next verse. Then this they said, testing him, you see? That's the reason that they might have something of which to accuse him. Do you think for one moment they care about the law? Do you think for one moment they care about the woman? How rude. They brought the woman 
while Jesus was teaching. They are the ones to be dealing with such cases. They are the rulers. But they want to catch Jesus. Now we got him in a conundrum. We're going to impale him on the horns of a dilemma. Let's see what he does. Hmm? We got him this time. He cannot say break Moses' law. And then they stone her, people, all his disciples and all his people follow him about grace. This grace thing, he's, he's, not, he's not living it up. He got him. The Bible says Jesus stooped down and wrote on the ground with his finger. And don't forget, the ground is, I've said before, I'm going to show you again, the ground is what? Stony ground. He wrote, and there is a beautiful picture here. If only they have eyes to see, they know the Bible. When Jesus wrote with his finger on the, on the stone, there is a verse in Exodus, God gave the Ten Commandments. When God had made an end of speaking with him on Mount Sinai, God gave Moses the two tablets of the testimony, tables of stone, written with the finger of God. Written with the finger of God. Jesus saying, you are telling me what the commandments say? I am the one who gave the commandment. Next verse. So when they continued asking him, they continued asking him. They thought they got him. He raised himself up and said to them, he who is without sin among you, let him throw a stone at her first. And again, he stooped down and wrote on the ground. All right, next verse. Then those who heard it being convicted by their conscience went out one by one. Went out one by one. Are you listening? It's only the second time. So something happened. Scripture verse, Lord, Jeremiah 17. Jeremiah 17. O Lord, the hope of Israel, all who forsake you shall be ashamed. Those who depart from me, God says, shall be written in the earth. Their names will be written. So the first time he wrote the Ten Commandments, they still didn't leave. All right? They still keep on asking him. Then he got up, he says, he says, without sin, throw the first stone. Then he stooped down, and this time, what the Lord said to me was this. He wrote beside the commandments their name. Shimon. <laughs> Maybe he wrote the one who committed adultery, Gabriel, and his girlfriend's name, Rivka. <laughs> Didn't take long. When he, the Bible says when he looked up finally, they were all gone. Yeah. Out, man. Yeah. Out. <laughs> gone. Beginning with the, go back again. Went out one by one, beginning with the oldest. The oldest have more reputation to save. And more sin also. The young ones more blur. <laughs> old one go out, okay, go out. You know? But the older one doesn't get better when you're older. If your eye is not on Jesus. They went out, and Jesus was left alone and the woman standing in the midst. When Jesus had raised himself up and saw no one but the woman, he said to her, Woman! Now, the only one who can stone her, the only one without sin, is Jesus. None of them can stone her because they all had sin. So, he could, but he would not. They would, if they could, but they could not. Beautiful. Now he stands in front of her. Now watch this. Jesus and her alone. Watch this. The judge of all that is right is standing in front of her. But you see, it's not time to be a judge. It's time to die for sinners like her. And he look at her and says, woman, he was more concerned about her feeling guilty. Where are those that accuse you? She look around, all right? She says, no one, Lord. I believe she got saved here. She called him Lord. The Pharisees brought her calling Jesus, teacher, we caught this woman. Notice the phrase? She called him Lord. If you don't want to be saved, don't call him Lord. The moment you call him Lord, he saves you. Okay? No one. Look around you. Is there anyone left to condemn you? She says, no one, Lord. He wanted her to say it. These are her first words. No one condemns me. Then Jesus looked at her. The only one who can condemn her. Neither do I condemn you. Neither do I condemn you. Go and sin no more. I've said it again and again. The church has it backwards. You go and sin no more first. Then we won't condemn you. Jesus says, I don't condemn you. Now go and sin no more. 
It's in the power of no condemnation that you can go and sin no more. Amen. If we preach no condemnation and what Christ has done, it will empower people to go and sin no more. Amen. If they fall into sin, there is no condemnation. Now, when she walked away, Jesus knew that when he hung on the cross, he would have to pay for her no condemnation. Somebody has to be condemned. Somebody has to pay for her no condemnation. Sin is sin and God is holy. But God sent him to be our lamb, to take all our sins. As she walked away, Jesus knew there's one more sin that would be put on him at the cross that he would have to suffer and die for. Are you with me? We see grace and we see God's righteousness meet. There is no conflict between holiness and grace. Then he walked outside, just outside the porch, the people gathered outside. Jesus spoke to them again saying, I am the light of the world. Can you understand now? Many of us, when we think about God's light, we are afraid to come to God. You know why? We are, we are afraid that He will expose our sins. But once you're a believer, come boldly to the light. You know why? The light now shows no condemnation. And now God put a spotlight of heaven now on the believer and God's holy eyes cannot see one speck of sin on you. Doesn't mean there is no sin in you. But God's eyes don't see any sin on you because God's eyes saw your sin on Christ 2,000 years ago. Doesn't mean you are perfect today. Once you are a Christian, doesn't mean that you have it all together. You still fail. But God's holy eyes that saw your sins in the body of Jesus Christ cannot see in both places and remain holy and righteous. If God punish your sins in the body of Jesus Christ and then God punish you today, God will be unjust. And God will not be there. Today we have no condemnation because God didn't compromise His holiness. When the woman walked away, Jesus had to pay for it. And friend, it's paid. I say it's paid. That's the beauty of the light. Amen. The last, by the way, just let you know, it's a long chapter. I don't have time to tell you this. But the chapter ends like this. Jesus told them, Abraham rejoiced to see my day. Remember Abraham and his son? God showed Abraham. God said, stop. Abraham must have seen a vision, Mount Moriah, the cross. And Jesus says, Abraham rejoiced to see my day. And the Greek there is exceedingly rejoice. He saw my day. And then people look at him, you're not yet 50 years old, you've seen Abraham. Then Jesus says, before Abraham was, I am. All right, look at the verse, drop down. Before Abraham was, I am. Then they took up stones. This is the last verse of this chapter. They took up stones to throw at him. See the story open with stones? It closes with stones. But the problem is that you cannot stone someone who is sinless. What, look at how cool he ends the entire thing. Jesus hid himself and went out of the temple. Now, it's either a miracle, <laughs> all right, they cannot see him. He walked right in their midst. He didn't run away the other side, you know. It's so cool, he walked right in their midst, y'all. Either that or, you know, people whose eyes are blinded, they are blinded to grace in front of them, right under their nose. People who are, listen carefully, people who are legalistic will miss the blessing. It could be their wife and they don't see it. it. Could be their children, they don't see it. They don't see how blessed they are. They are blinded. Even Jesus was in the midst. Walk through their midst, they cannot see it. It was a judgment. Going through the midst of them so passed by. That's how the chapter ends. Start with stones, end with stones. Start with, notice Jesus went through the midst. Can you see the midst? Center. When they brought the woman, go back, this verse three, they set her in the midst. In other words, they set her in the midst. Drop down the last verse. Jesus went through the midst. And the Lord said to me, son, it begins with sin in the center. It ends with grace in the center. Amen. Give him praise. Come on, church. Hallelujah. <laughs> Hallelujah. Kickstart your year with Joseph's brand new four CD audio series, Be Still, finding rest in the midst of chaos as a thank you for your gift of any amount to the ministry. In this liberating series, learn how you can rest even when challenges come your way. You can receive good you don't deserve because Christ took all the bad 
that you and I deserve at the cross and put to our account all His goodness, all His righteousness. If you want to receive what He's done, rest and believe. And for a gift of $75 or more to the ministry, you will also get Joseph's latest book, Anchored, Finding Peace in the Storms of Life. My latest book, Anchored, talks about real issues that all of us go through, insecurity, comparison, and anxiety. When you order Anchored today, I would also like to bless you with a copy of No More Mind Games. I wrote this to help people who are struggling with discouragement, depression, and suicidal thoughts. I pray that you'll get a hold of these books and be a blessing to someone whom you know needs to be encouraged and strengthened by the Lord. Experience a new level of peace today. Get your copy now at josephprince.org or call us toll free at 1-877-769-5433. Don't miss this limited time offer. Um, we we found cancer and and he passed away within eight weeks of us finding that out and my daughter at the time was about six months old and when he passed away she was nine months old pastor Prince talks about 120 percent restoration in life um, and and God restoring what he didn't take away and, and that's absolutely what happened in my life God was good and I didn't know what was gonna happen and really from that uh, he he returned to me and restored in my life family and a father for my daughter and I mean a happiness I've never known. Joseph Prince Ministries is a Section 501c3 nonprofit organization, and your gift is tax deductible for the amount that exceeds any fair market value of the materials you receive from us. 